Hey everybody, Cliff Ravenscraft here from PodcastAnswerMan.com and GSPN.TV. What I'm going to do in this video is give you a very basic overview of how podcasting works. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a very simplistic presentation. It is just the basics and it op oversimplifies just about everything. But what I've found is that doing this basic overview of how podcasting works, it really helps people to get the the big picture, to see the overall, hey, what is literally happening here when I produce a podcast, when I'm actually setting up and configuring a podcast? You know, if you're going through the step-by-step, -step, the motions of getting everything configured and set up, what does any of this stuff do? And what I have found over the years of doing consulting is that when people have this big picture, it helps them get through the little steps knowing kind of where they're going with what they're working on in each of the steps along the way. So with that being said, we're going to start off right now with recording your audio. Now on the screen here, I certainly have um, my favorite digital audio recorder, the Edderall R-09HR. Unfortunately, no longer manufactured, but there are some other great recorders out there. Now, with this being said, the very first step in the process is simply recording your audio, getting your voice recorded. Now, of course, yes, there are video podcasts as well. I'm fond of audio podcasting, and so when I talk about podcasting, I'm sharing with you audio podcasting, but of course, if you were doing video, it'd be recording your video. But for us, we're going to be talking about today recording your audio. Now, do you need to have an Edderall digital audio recorder? No. In fact, it doesn't matter how you record your audio. Let me tell you, there are a bunch of different ways. You could use a portable digital audio recorder. I know many podcasters out there who only use this the one single device that you see on the screen, and they do a great job, and there are some ways that you can do that. There's some techniques with this recorder that would make that possible. If you're using this recorder like I do, I'm obviously not speaking just into the internal microphones, but I am speaking into a high LPR40, going into a Mackie mixer and all of this stuff. But I am sending all of the audio out of my mixer into this little audio recorder using the line in jack. You could use Pro Gear and send it into your computer and use free recording software like Audacity or GarageBand on your Mac to actually record your audio as well. You could even use your iPhone or your Android device. There are a ton of applications out there that will turn your handheld phone, your smartphone, into an audio recorder. Uh, one of my favorite applications for doing this on the iPhone is a, is a program by Griffin. It's an app by Griffin Tech, and it's called iTalk, I-T-A-L-K. It records it into an AIF file, and uh, you will need to, of course, turn that into an mp3 file which actually by the way is the next step in the process so basically what we have here is once we have our mp3 recording you will want to take that whether it's coming from your digital audio recorder or whether it's coming from your uh, software on your computer or whatever the case may be the end result my recommendation must be an mp3 file now, for those of you who have been recording via GarageBand and you've been creating these M4A files and, and all this AAC stuff, you know, that's great as long as your audience is using an, I, uh, an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod, or something like that, or maybe a couple other devices out there that have the ability to play those files, but certainly not all of them. And what happens is if you have an MP3 file, this is universal, can be played on practically every single media playing device known to man today. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So MP3 files are where it's at. It's what I highly recommend. All right, now that we have an MP3 file, what you could do if you wanted to is you could just send that MP3 file as an email attachment to everybody who wants to listen to it. That's not practical, is it? What we are going to do instead is we are going to look at the cloud. That's right, uh, the cloud, a.k.a. the internet, whatever you want to call it. Um, there are two different aspects of this. Now, I will tell you, a lot of people are taking their MP3 files and they're putting them on the same part of the cloud, the same computer that hosts their website. This is a bad idea. 
And, and the reason for that is because if you upload your MP3 files to the same place that hosts your web, website, if your podcast becomes popular, if you have, happen to get on the Oprah show and, and 10,000 people immediately go and try to download your file, not only is your file not going to be able to be downloaded, your site, your website's not going to be available. And if you're on shared hosting, the thing is, is that, of course, there's probably other people whose websites are going to be down as well. And uh, chances are very high that you probably will get your account suspended for um, an overage of bandwidth. And you might say to yourself, well, I've got unlimited bandwidth. I have no worries in the world. Well, you don't have unlimited CPU cycles. So what I recommend is splitting things up to where you have your media host and your website on two different servers. All right, and the service that I use for my MP3 files online is a service called Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. There are other services out there like Blueberry, and there are even a handful of other services that you can choose that are actually designed to host media files for podcasts that offer true unlimited bandwidth. And there are many reasons why you'd want to do this if you have any desire for your popular for your podcast to ever become popular. If you stick to putting your MP3 files over here, basically uploading them to your website, you're consistently going to be hoping that your podcast never becomes popular. And that's not very smart, is it? So anyway, upload your file to the to your media host that's up in the cloud. Okay, now that you've uploaded your MP3 file to your media host, everything on the internet has an address. Just kind of, kind of like if you were to sell something to somebody on Craigslist and they say, hey, I'm ready to come pick that up. And it's like, okay, well, I'm, I've got it ready for you to come pick up. Uh, and they say, okay, where do you live? So you give them the address to your house and boom, they plug it in, they find you and they come pick up the goods, right? Well, that's exactly what happens with podcasting. So basically what I would recommend that you do is you actually have your website. Your website, and by the way, I would highly recommend using WordPress. It makes all of this stuff so much easier if you do. And so if you have a website specially running uh, WordPress, what you will wanna do is you will actually create a new blog post in in podcasting, we're going to call your blog post with an audio file on it your show notes. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the address from your media host and we're going to plug that into your website. We're going to put a link to it right there on your website. People can download it. Uh, we're going to use WordPress because that's the best tool out there. And we're going to use a plug-in that's going to allow us to put a nice flash audio player so people can come to your website and they can just click the play button and immediately listen to your website or, or to your new episode as soon as you put it on the web. And not only that, but the the thing is, is so far what we have here is not technically a podcast. It's not. It doesn't become a podcast until we add one other major ingredient and that my friends is this thing called RSS. You may have seen a logo that looks very similar to this or if not identical to this. This is what we call an RSS logo and basically what RSS does and I'm going to oversimplify this is it syndicates your website. It makes it available so that people can subscribe to a feed of your content. All of our websites look different from each other. We all design them differently. We put our text and images in all different places and stuff like that. But when but when it comes to all of us who have websites who have RSS feeds, our RSS feeds all pretty much look exactly the same. We put the title, the, the title is always in the same place, the author is always in the same place, the timestamp's always in the same place, in the same format. It's very uniform. And for those who are very used to blogging, you know that you no longer have to go to all your favorite blogs and bookmark them and then go into your bookmarks every day to see if anybody posts anything new. You probably know you can go to a service like Google Reader at google.com slash reader and you can actually subscribe to your friends' blogs and if they post something new, your Google Reader will go to their websites look at their RSS feeds and see if anything's new since the last time time they check. And if there is something new, then it lets you know. All of that happens consistently through the use of RSS. Now, there is some initial setup involved of your RSS feed, especially when it comes to podcasting. But once you do that, it's pretty much all 
automated from that point forward. You shouldn't have to do very much after the initial setup of your RSS feed uh, and configuration for podcasting. So pretty much at this point, once you've done all the initial work, you record your audio, you uh, turn it into an MP3 file, you do a couple other little things, but uh, then you upload it to your media host, you go over to your website, create a blog post, take the address from the media host for your MP3 file, plug it into a blog post on your site, and the thing over there on the right-hand side with the RSS feed, that happens automatically. You don't have to actually do anything with that. And then the magic happens. Now that you have, once you have an RSS feed in there, this is technically a podcast, and now it's ready for the world to consume in multiple ways. People can use uh, software on their computer called uh, Podcatchers. The most popular one out there is called iTunes. And of course, what iTunes does is every single time you load it up, or if you keep it on, it'll actually check it automatically. It will go to your RSS feed to see if anything's new. And if it is, then they will actually say, okay, oh, there's a new episode. Let me go directly to the media host and send it right over here. All right. So that's how a podcatcher such as uh, iTunes works. And again, if you want to if you want to get a greater understanding of iTunes, go to podcastanswerman.com slash iTunes. Again, that's podcastanswerman.com slash iTunes. Now, there are uh, software programs on both the iPhone as well as um, the BlackBerry. There's applications for Android. And I believe there's probably even a, a, an application on the uh, Microsoft phones and, and per- possibly even others out there where mobile phones, these smartphones, now have applications to subscribe directly to podcast feeds. Okay, My favorite one on the iPhone, by the way, is a program called Pocket Casts. It's all one word, P-O-C-K-E-T-C-A-S-T-S. It's in the App Store. I think it's $1.99. Totally worth it. I absolutely love it, and it's how I manage all my podcasts. So what I can do is I go to my somebody's website, I see what their RSS feed is, and it actually shows me the address in the URL once I click on their RSS feed. I take that, I type it into my little phone's uh, Pocket Cast application, and from that point forward, every time I load up that application, it checks to see if there's anything on the RSS feed that's new since the last time it found episodes for me. If there is something new, it tells my phone that there's something new. And if it tells my phone that there's something new, my phone will go out to the media host where it know because the RSS feed gave the phone the address, the location of that MP3 file, and it will request that it get downloaded directly into my phone. So I know that that um, is overly simplistic, but that's pretty much how things work. Uh, You basically have RSS feed will go out to everything else. So again, you record your audio. You turn it into an MP3 file. It gets uploaded to your media host. You put it on your website. And after you get the initial thing set up, once everything is initially set up, the very first time, all configured and ready to go, those are the four basic steps of producing your podcast. All of this stuff over here on the right-hand side, all of this stuff, happens on behalf of your user and happens automatically. But again, this right here, my friends, is how podcasting works. This is a very basic overview. Thank you for tuning in. And if you want more information related to podcasting and new media, I strongly encourage you to head over to podcastanswerman.com where I have hundreds of hours of free podcast content. Head over to podcastanswerman.com slash help, H-E-L-P, And there's tons of tutorials over there. I'm also available for one-on-one consulting. Thank you very much for tuning in. God bless you and have a great day.